Welcome to Let's Learn Two Point Hospital. All right, hi, this is Attica, and welcome back to Two Point Hospital. We had just finished fluttering up to one star, which opened up two more hospitals for us, Mitten and Tumble, that we're looking at right there. Tumble is basically about fractures because <laughs> they give us the hint in the uh, description. Everybody falls there. It's a hilly, hilly, cold place. But we're going to go to Mitten University because that is a research and training hospital. And the research part is what we're really after here. So we're going to spend a lot of time in Mitten. Uh, we've been doing what I call out and up. We are going out and taking um, hospitals to level one so that we can go to another hospital because we want to keep expanding the number of illnesses that we treat and and just kind of opening up the map but here at Mitten we're going to take our time and build this one up to be quite the hospital because it's going to be kind of the uh, really the center of our operations for the foreseeable future because we're going to um, build this one up to be a really strong research hospital and you'll see how that impacts us later on as we start moving into other hospitals but for now let's just uh, look at this and say we're going to build this one up into a really good research hospital and the other thing about this one is that we can't hire any experienced staff everybody's going to come in with no additional training other than their basic medical school so we're going to hire staff and train them up. Now, our assistants and janitors, we can get local people who are uh, trained there and have some skills, but our doctors and nurses are going to come in with no, no extra, no bonuses at all, but we're going to fix that, of course. So what I'm doing here now, again, is measuring this one to see if I can use kind of that center GP practice, and I can. It's, it's kind of a... Um, very wide, narrow, um, <laughs> wide, narrow. <laughs> it's long and narrow, I guess I should say, or or uh, wide and short, one of the two. Anyway, uh, I'm, I'm just measuring things out to see how much room we have to work with, how much space is there, is there on either side. And so what, we're, what, what this one is just begging for is a central hallway that runs all the way across the length of it. So that's what we're going to end up doing is a central central hallway and have rooms off of that. And because we have the space in the hallway, we're actually going to uh, make the rooms a little bigger uh, than I normally would. And what we're going to do here, we've unlocked this reception. So we're going to build up a, a pretty decent um, footprint for a reception area, a four by four, and try to kind of center that up into into the this main area here. And the reason we're kind of setting this aside, we're not going to really use, we don't need this bigger, certainly don't need this bigger reception uh, at the start. But we're going to uh, go ahead and set it up and, and try to get it centrally located so that we can build and plan around it and have it as almost, it's really more of a marker to say, okay, here's the center of your, of your uh, main building. And remember for me, that first building is your general diagnostics building. And so we're going to uh, set up our combination of GP offices and our basic diagnostics um, in this building. And then, and then as we get a little uh, ex extra diagnostics, we will kind of flow out into the closest buildings near us. So we've got our center central reception. Now we want to set up our GPs. We want to give some space for getting around that thing. And then we want to see how much space do we have going back to build and what it turns out is we have nine uh, spaces going from kind of right to left as we're looking at it here and that would be three basically three buildings we could put in there so what I decided to do was put in the toilets and the staff room centrally located in this uh, first building So we're going to build a decent size uh, toilet here, centrally located, and, and try to figure out exactly where would I start it. And to give the space, we want to kind of, have, again, have enough room to get around that reception area. So we're going to start it over kind of one off. It's, and I know this is, this is a little boring to watch me do this, I know, but, but it's important that you kind of get this thing figured out 
correctly to start with. So I'm kind of thinking about uh, how much space do I have? And, and you'll see me, I, I kind of measure things a couple of times, either because I'm just stupid and forget what I've, what I've just got through measuring or uh, I'm just not sure what I want to do. But before I start throwing buildings down, or rooms down rather, I, I, I want to have an idea of, of what this whole thing needs to look like. So I decided to go with our, our you know, our classic little Pinstar two by four uh, bathroom because it's very efficient, gives us four stalls, which is typically enough for uh, a, a single building like this. Um, we may need, you know, if, if we if we really grow this one out, the, the volume may get too much here. But actually, I don't think it will because I've, I've got ideas for what I want to do to, if this uh, if we take this hospital even larger and larger, uh, I have some ideas for what I want to do. But we'll get into those later. That's down the road. Right now, we're still trying to learn to walk. So uh, we'll set up the toilet and the um, staff room, as I said, kind of centrally located here just offset from that uh, main entrance. And you'll notice to start with, I'm just putting in bare bones minimum, no upgrades, no, no pretty stuff, no, uh, no taking, leveling them up. We don't have an immediate goal for, uh, you know, any kind of staff morale or anything else. So uh, I'm making them pretty basic right now. And you see me here, I'm starting out, I put in a, a three, your classic three by three GP office. But I'm gonna change that when I realize the this real true deal here, kind of lesson we had in Flottering, if you recall, is we ended up with that big wide hall that we really didn't need. <clears throat> so rather than have wide halls and little little rooms, I'd rather have rooms that are a little bit larger. So that's perfect. We have six that way. That means we can put two rooms in there. So there I'm kind of measuring out. There's a three by three that'll fit in there. This is going to be our pharmacy. Remember, our pharmacy is really about the only treatment room that I would ever put in that first building, in that general diagnostics building. And eventually, you could even move it out of the out of that uh, building if you if you were tight for space. Now, here's the point where I realize, you know what? I've got that extra extra space there why don't i go ahead and instead of having a three by three why don't i have a three by four and use that extra space and then i'll take this um uh, gp office and expand it out and make it a four by four and that way it'll be it'll be easier since it's a bigger bigger room it'll be easier to uh, get the prestige up on it and level it up but also notice even though it's a four by four it got all that space notice that that um, and this may look a little funky to you this is where I go with form follows function uh, this is my compromise for uh, you know I don't want the hospital to look ridiculous and and, um, and just have all kinds of silly stuff just to make it uh, you know just for bonuses but at the same time, I will do it to make things efficient. And here's a case, that GP office, that desk is right next to the door. That's why, because the reason is, I want that patient to take the minimum number of steps, get in the seat, get diagnosed, and get out of there, get moving to his next place. And we can make the room pretty behind him, but it doesn't need to be, um, the he doesn't need to take a, a two minute walk across this giant room to get to the desk, uh, to get to his seat. So now I realize, well, I've got the space, I might as well make these um, these buildings 
or these rooms four deep and, and use all that space. So we'll have more narrow halls, but bigger, bigger rooms. So, and I apologize, I'm a little slow. It takes me a while to, to figure this stuff out. Uh, a smarter person would have already had all this built, but uh, I got to kind of, I kind of ponder it a little bit. And I, my poor old brain just sort of uh, gradually gets, gets, uh, gets the idea. So, again, making these, uh, favoring the GP offices, it's the most important uh, room in, in your hospital. But again, kind of setting it up so that uh, you walk in the door and sit down. That patient is boom, boom, and out of there. And so we're making these 4x4 four four GPs and 4x3, four three, or 3x4, three however you want to say it, um, diagnostics rooms. And notice how we're matching them up one-to-one. -one. We've got um, diagnostics and GP, diagnostics and GP. That's the pattern we'll follow all through the hospital is to match them up one-to-one. -one. And here I realized because um, I don't want to crowd up that um, reception to get another room in there, I need to actually make that uh, GP office a three by three by four rather than four by four. That gives us enough room that we can put another um, three by four room next to it and put in our psychiatrist. And I guess the one thing I would do here, uh, maybe consider, that eh, doesn't matter, but could consider reversing those two and putting that GP office closer to reception, but it it doesn't, I don't think it, at the end of the day, it'd be six of one, half a dozen of the other, because, you know, you, you want that, you, this game's all about managing the walking. How far do people have to walk to get their jobs done or get to, to accomplish whatever goal they're trying to do? trying to get to see a GP, they're trying to get to a diagnostics, they're trying to get back to a GP, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, a doctor's trying to walk to the room he's going to work in. Uh, you know, all it's all about managing the walking. Now here I was trying to make a four by six room for the ward, and here I'm going to realize, whoops, uh, I actually had it uh, four at one point, but then I think I moved my mouse before I uh, let go of it and actually cut it down to three. So now I've got to expand it back out to the proper size because it just doesn't work. It's, you know, this is, uh, again, this is our Pinstar power ward, or at least my variation of it, and um, it needs to be four by five or four by six to, to work. So now we can go ahead and build out that ward and we'll have a nice, a nice ward in a good location close to, uh, in, after, in a minute, when we build another GP office, they'll have a GP office near it, and it'll be good to go. And one thing here I, I have uh, failed to do, this is our first hospital in a cold region. We need uh, radiators to heat all these hallways and all our rooms, and I, I've, I've consistently forgotten to put them in. So um, 
I'll have to go back and fix that later, which I do, of course. And now I'm just setting up a training room because remember this one, we're going to get totally inexperienced staff and we don't want to run our hospital with a bunch of untrained people. So we're going to take the philosophy of, of training as quickly as we can and moving people up levels as quickly as we can and having the best possible staff we can have uh, to uh, do whatever needs to be done. So um, here's another GP office that's going to match up with our ward. So we've got diagnostics wise at this point, we've got a ward, we've got general diagnostics, we've got cardiology and psychiatry. And we've got, um, this will give us three GPs, which is good. It's good. It, it wouldn't kill us, in fact, to have four, but three, three is fine for, for the start. So now we're going to hire three doctors. We've got three GPs, and we really want to have strong GPs. Uh, reason being, if we can get the, uh, the highest diagnosis we can get right off the bat with every patient, the better off we're going to be. So we're going to invest in an outside trainer to get those three student uh, doctors up to level one GP. So that's the first thing we're going to do. If you'll notice, we're actually doing that. We haven't even opened the hospital yet. Uh, we've built this stuff and we've got uh, a reception sitting there. We have no receptionist yet because what we, we really don't want to, we're not even interested in running a hospital without some trained people. Now we could, I, absolutely we could. We could start running the hospital and having people coming in and queuing up and we could have uh, kind of untrained doctors treating them and it would be okay but I really prefer having some treatments. Uh, and it also, there, you know, we, I could also open the hospital already by throwing a receptionist in there. And, or yeah, an assistant in the reception area and let them queue up, um, which would be fine because there's actually usually a little delay before you start getting anybody anyway. So, so here's people already coming in. So they're coming in for us. And, but that's fine. Uh, they can just sit, stand there for a bit. Now, um, there I decided to turn that um, toilet around a little bit just to, just to free up more space around reception where it's going to get crowded where people are going to come in. I'm going to do the same thing with the... Um, are your salt levels With dangerously our, uh, staff low? Staff room. We might as well bump it out to uh, four to Eat be consistent. With and now, we, now we've got more room there for the open. The coming. taste of the sea, right in your mouth. Twenty-four hours a day. This is Two, two, two Point Radio. Ooh, ooh. So now our doctors have finished their training so we can open up reception and start sending people off to uh, go to GPs. And we're going to set these guys in the rota so that's exactly what they do. They are GPs and that's what they're going to do. And do we have to have three to start? No, we don't. But Wanted to get some bang for my buck out of that first uh, guest lecture. And wanted to get off to ha and have strong doctors everywhere. So now we're going to get some nurses in here and start on diagnostics. And again, invest in an outside trainer to get a couple of nurses trained in diagnostics. So now what will happen is as our patients come in, go to GP, they'll be sent off to diagnostics and the plan is to be able to, to um, support them with uh, trained uh, nurses for the diagnostics. And here I saw that cold warning on that uh, one doctor wandering the halls and realized, hey, I haven't put radiators in this place at all. So it's time to start doing that. Now, you notice I'm, I'm, I'm not editing every room. I'm actually kind of Editing, it up, editing the room from outside, if you will, because I'm just using the general functionality of putting in these uh, radiators. If you do this, 
be very, very careful because sometimes you can put an item in a room and block up the room and actually cause the room to stop functioning. Uh, so be very careful if you take this approach. Uh, the better player would, of course, have already done this and put the radiators in as, uh, as the uh, room is being built. That's what I should have done. And hopefully I'll get better at that, uh, you know. And I do as, as as play progresses here, I get better at that. Now that, I, now that I've punched in. And you notice the heat goes out from the um, reception because it's considered part of that open space. Each of the rooms are individual, so the heat out in the hallway doesn't come doesn't help you inside the room. So each room has to be heated on its own. Reception is technically a room, but then again it isn't because it's actually considered open space as well. So the heater that's in that uh, reception actually helps heat that uh, hallway. We'll need more more heaters in there, but there's not enough out there right now. So what I want to do here is put drinks and snacks at both ends and in the center so that we can keep um, our staff and our um, visitors um, with food and, food and drink and we're also going to put in some leaflets because uh, that gives them some keeps them from being so bored so if there are cues folks can um, grab a pamphlet and check it out they can get something to eat or drink and of course we're going to have eats and eating and if we're going to have the snack machines uh, the drink machines, we're going to have to have bins to pick up the litter, to collect the litter. Oh. We're going to go for the best uh, janitor oh. we can find who can also do our upgrades for us and get started upgrading machinery where we can. So I guess the tactic I took here is, in spite of the fact that uh, this is a training hospital and we're getting newbie doctors and nurses every time, I want to have the best, highest trained possible to staff see what we they can. Do about my now there, allergy. because they we've got a long people in training and people queuing up, rosemary extract. it cost me a month's wages, but I'm finally starting to feel the effects. Still can't eat gravy, though. Sorry. Uh, so uh, we've got people queuing up, so I, we've got an untrained uh, staff working for now, but then we'll get her trained in something at the first opportunity. Now we just hit our uh, requirements to give us a research license, so now, now we're working toward having a one-star hospital. So we've got to train a doctor in research, and then we've got to... Um, research this chromotherapy and tr uh, hi uh, treat someone in chromotherapy and that's going to give us our one star. But we're not going to, um, how shall I put this, panic and, uh, well, not panic, it's the wrong, rush. We're not going to rush to that research. We're going to make sure we've got a good functioning hospital with some decent training and, and some rooms that work. Um, there we go, now I'm realizing it's still cold in places. And I keep missing that toilet. Eventually I'll, I'll punch in and notice that it, it's cold in the toilet as well. So we're going to train one doctor in psychiatry. We don't have any. We've got the office, but we don't have a, a doctor. And these promotions, uh, my advice to you is just always take them. Always promote. Um, and and I would not haggle with their their um, uh, salaries personally. I would uh, pay them what they're asking for because what will happen is if you're trying to hold off on the salaries, you will end up with uh, the staff getting less and being less and less happy because they're not making the money they'd like to be making. 
and you can you can make plenty of money in your hospital to pay pay your people well and not and not have to fight that fight. So we're getting more and more diseases coming in that we're able to uh, diagnose. We're, we've got, or so far, we've got all the treatments we need for those diseases. Patients found abusing hospital facilities will henceforth be considered so organ make sure donors. we have two nurses running our ward that to really be efficient that. Uh, Six bed ward needs two nurses. In today's headlines, lottery winner Arthur Compass has announced winning the jackpot hasn't changed him one bit. He made this announcement floating over Krogenbusch in his new gold plated hovercraft, just like he's always done. So now we're going to upgrade our, our quality of care in the uh, ward by training a couple of uh, folks in uh, ward management. Again, investing in an outside trainer to uh, give us that level one ward management. And we've got one of these lovely uh, emergencies where we get a whole bunch of patients. We don't even have to diagnose them. They just go straight to the treatment. Uh, to me, they're just really easy money. Uh, they're, they're a beautiful thing because you, uh, like, even if you get a queue and, and they have to wait a while, that's okay because it, it's just, uh, that's just uh, patience and treatments and money lining up to, uh, to be spent. And you see it's getting a, getting a pretty good queue in our little uh, hallway there, but that'll clear out and eventually we'll uh, build a second psychiatry. To uh, help out with this. And remember, psychiatry is a diagnosis room and a treatment room. What we want to do right now is start treating these uh, patients who just came in, and we're doing that, but we're going to need a uh, uh, little more uh, ability for throughput in psychiatry coming down the road. So, here again, we've got this, uh, as we're doing all that training, we've got nurse shortages, so we're just going to put some student nurses and assign them to jobs and then eventually they'll become trained in some sort of um, either diagnosis or treatment specialty and they'll go off and uh, be assigned to the appropriate um, uh, area. And we got a little bit of a pile up right here uh, with our pharmacy. We need to get that Clear, but we can't. We don't have any uh, candidates that we can hire right this minute. Training course completed. Now we've also got a new treatment. We've got. Um, we need the deluxe uh, treatment. Um, so we're going to um, expand out now in our hospital. But these people who just came out of our ward training. We want them to work in the ward. So we're going to set them up to be ward only and make sure that our folks who are uh, capable, who have the training, are, are the ones who are going to the ward. And I left that one as an extra to be able to treat clown, uh, to go to treatment, just as a swing for now. And eventually, we want to have, uh, we would want to know exactly which nurses are assigned to the ward. So now we're going to expand out, and this is probably a good place to wrap up this first this episode of our first look at Mitten. We're going to start expanding out and building a treatment area, and we'll keep growing out as we go. 
but we're going to build a treatment area so we can get that deluxe uh, treatment in there and other things as well going down the road. So let's wrap up right here. What we've done is set up the basics of a good hospital. We've started using our training Toilets need routine servicing. to give us the highest quality staff we can get. And we'll continue that process of training and training and training to up the level of our staff so that we can keep our throughput good. Remember, the better the staff, the better the diagnosis, the better the diagnosis, the less uh, permutations or repetitions of that GP diagnosis uh, uh, cycle you have to go through, the less you have to go through, the more efficiently you work and the faster you can move people through. So uh, let's wrap up right there and we'll continue with this uh, in kind of a part two of our first look at Mitten. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it'll help you become a better player and I hope you'll join us for our next Two Point Hospital video. Thank you.